welcome to our worship service here at St. Paul's United Church, and I'm really excited about today's <laughs> service. So I have with me Rebecca Amadai, and for those of you who don't know her, she is our children and youth worker in staff here at uh, St. Paul's. You've heard her sing, and some of you would have seen her play the, what is that toy? Oh, that, the xylophone. Yeah, the xylophone. <laughs> yeah. I, that was so precious. It was such, and the kids loved that. So anyhow. Um, so Rebecca is our guest uh, today as a preacher, and uh, she is um, she's a woman of many talents and many gifts, and she has a passion in particular for social justice, and so we're going to talk more about that in a minute. But um, Rebecca, many of the congregation don't even know, what was your undergraduate degree in again? Yeah, so I did my undergraduate at the University of Waterloo in, in religious studies mm -hmm. and in peace and conflict studies. Ah, oh, what an interesting combination. And it is a combination, but people don't usually connect religious right. studies and social justice. But yeah. we in the United Church certainly do. <laughs> Why I love it here. <laughs> <laughs> and, but you're also a teacher, are you not? Yeah, I'm a high school teacher by trade, but I, I haven't taught um, since having kids. Okay, okay. And now um, our, most of the children in our Discovery Kids are, are little more... <laughs> <laughs> right, so it's a learning curve. <laughs> it's a learning curve, but of course you have the youth as well, for yes. sure. Well, we're going to hear more about uh, Rebecca's passion for justice and how it fits into the faith and why it is important to us, at least as part of the United Church of Canada. So absolutely delighted that you are here with us. Of course, Victoria, it's summer. Victoria is away now. And uh, some of the music, I, we just hope you like. It's all got a special theme, and you can guess what that is. So <laughs> we'll leave that for you. We are here to open our hearts and our lives to living the path of Jesus Christ. And it means delving into the issues and the realities of the world. So let us worship our God. I want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Huron-Wendat First Nations people, and that we seek to be in right relationship with Beausoleil First Nations. We have had a painful and tragic past. May we together work for a more wonderful, honoring, and dignity-filled future. Creator and loving God, we open our hearts today to hear your call to do what is good for one another and for our earth. May we hear the call of all peoples and lands to create a world where everyone is celebrated, nourished, and loved. May our hearts and minds be open today to remembering Jesus' example, that there is work to be done to bring equity and freedom to all. May our hearts and minds be open to learning a bit more, to seeing things a different way, to seeing the world through the eyes of our future generations. May we be moved to serve one another and our future generations by working for equal human rights and environmental preservation. Amen. Even in the dark, Jesus says, don't be afraid. I go before you always. Hello, friends. We're going to sing, What Does the Lord Require of You? This is a setting of Micah 6.8 from the Hebrew Scriptures. It's a song designed for three parts, so we're going to divide the room into three sections, uh, section one, section two, and section three. Now sometimes people like to sing, who have low voices, like to sing the first part, and uh, people with middle voices would sing the second, and people with higher voices, along with children, can sing the third. We're going to do each part two times, and then we'll start at the beginning, adding each voice in, and it will be beautiful if you sing out boldly. So here we go. What does the Lord require of you? 
What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? What of Luke, chapter 4, verses 16 to 21. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll and gave it to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Rebecca, one of the things that fascinated me when your uh, resume came across uh, my desk is that I had met you before because you've been here about four years now, but on staff, I think two and a half. That's correct. We we first walked through the doors four years ago. And yeah, yeah. You just had uh, your daughter. Yeah, just Rosemary. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, and I immediately f had this fascinating sense that you were really about a very uh, larger picture world view of your faith. And so why is social justice so important to you? The answer has really changed for me over the years, but, but I, can, I can answer for, for right now. When I 
when I tuck my kids into bed at night, that's, that's my favorite time of the day sometimes because it's been a long, <laughs> exhausting day and I, I see them lying there and they're tucked into their beds warm and safe and, and I know that, you know, we've made it through another day. But I also think as a parent, I love that moment because you see your child in this space of, of safety and warmth and comfort and I know that I can give them everything that they need to reach their aspirations and their goals and their dreams. And, and when I'm sitting in that moment sometimes and I'm really enjoying this feeling, sometimes I, I'm transported away from that, that feeling of comfort. And I think about the children who are separated from their homes, separated from their parents, their aunts and uncles, their grandparents, their lands, their tradition, their language. Or I think about the children who can't fall asleep because of sounds of precision weapons or bombing or war or demolition that's happening outside of their bedroom. Or I think about the children whose lands and water are contaminated Absolutely. Yeah. By, by demolition, by, by corporate development projects, mining. by mining, by extraction of oil. In our area, dumps and uh, gravel pits. Yes. And I think about the children who are going to have nightmares tonight because daily they are targets for bullying or hatred or physical and emotional abuse based on racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia. I think about these children in, in these scenarios and my heart weeps. I tremble because then I think about their parent or I think about their auntie or their uncle or their grandparent or their guardian who knows that they just, they can't do that one more thing to protect their child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when, when access to resources and health care and education and success and accumulation of wealth is, is based on factors such as race, wealth, privilege. That is a sin. And to me, that is why social justice is so important. Yeah, it really is, and uh, it transforms other people's lives as well as our own, but it's not an easy sell, and it's a hard chew. Um, so how do you see it connected to your, to your faith? Well, I mean, I, I, I love, I remember in, in, my, in my youth, I, I became acquainted with this, this Jesus who I just thought, I, I love Jesus. Jesus is so <laughs> radical. Jesus is doing these yes, amazing yes. things. And you know, Jesus was, Jesus was opposed to the economic and social and political systems of his time. And he spoke out against the standard treatment of women and slaves and, and proposed changes to the economy, the taxation system, um, the, the, the social and political systems, so much so that he was in conflict with the Roman and Jewish elite of his time. And he was brought to condemnation and ultimately death. And a prisoner of conscience. <laughs> I, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and you see this, this is... And a prisoner of conscience, you know, sometimes they just get really bad rep. Like th this is not, this is not a popular or fashionable or, um, you know, it's not a romantic way to be, right? But this is this is the 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 path that Jesus led. And so, as a disciple, as a follower of Christ, I feel that I have no choice 
but to stand up and, and stand out against injustices and, and um, environmental degradation. I, I have no choice but to stand up and stand with the people whose voices need to yes. be heard. Yes, yes. And it's uncomfortable. It's, it's really uncomfortable. And it's never easy, right? No. <laughs> if Jesus comes calling, there's always a sacrifice. <laughs> that's, that's my little warning label. Hey, this Jesus can really muck up your life. <laughs> if you want a lovely pretend romantic princess right. or prince king kind of life. You right. Know? That's it's not, this, gonna you're not going to get that here. Jesus is going to roll his eyes. <laughs> right. Right. And, and so that's why social justice, and, and you know, I know that there are theologies out there that will say that the social justice rhetoric is a distraction from the gospel me message, but I believe it is integral and fundamental to the gospel yes. message and to what, what Jesus shows us. Well, sure, and even in the very basis of love your neighbor as yourself, that's a call to justice, you know. You can't have everything, and lots of people have nothing, and say you're loving your neighbor as yourself. I mean, it, it comes right down to some very basic principles, doesn't it? Absolutely, I, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Now, one of the other things that I know is a, is a connection you've made with faith and social justice. And a way you also live that out is in your work with Camp Micah. And I had not heard of Camp Micah until you came on staff. And we talked about it and actually encouraged our youth to go to it. And now I believe the United Church of Canada is Yes, uh, I'm quite very excited. excited. We're, we're working on, on getting uh, Camp Micah endorsed by, by the United Church of Canada. So that's really exciting for us. Yeah, yeah. So tell me a bit about that project and why it's part of your faith in sure. social justice. Yeah, so Camp Micah is a, a five-day ecumenical youth leadership camp for, for high school youth. And um, it, is, it, is, it is rooted in the Christian tradition, but, but we are radically inclusive of, of all people. And um, it's, it's centered around, we, we run workshops and activities and learning around um, um, equity, human rights, social justice, um, land justice, um, and, and really um, encouraging the youth to build skills and confidence around being um, activists in their home and school communities. Fascinating work. Absolutely. How long has it been going on? Uh, oh my gosh. It has it has roots it has roots in for for many decades in the in the 60s but um Camp Micah as it exists as an organization right now is um nearly 20, 20 okay. years old okay yeah, and we're going to include a clip in this, today's service about Camp Micah because it's, it's really neat and you get to hear some of the voices of the youth themselves. And so when you sent me that link, I thought, oh yeah, like let the, let yet the, yet let the youth speak for themselves. <laughs> Unfortunately, we won't be able to run this year because of the, the pandemic yep. again. Um, Lots of camps have faced that. Yes, yeah. so we have some very sad youth, but but we do still want to encourage youth to apply for next year. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's really important because it's also a time of formation as mm -hmm. uh, going into adulthood. And it's also about faith formation. I love the fact that though it is rooted in, in the Christian roots, it is very diverse and open to people of many faiths mm -hmm. and, and very much in keeping with the United Church. I just, as I learned right. more about it, I thought I really think, I think it's it, a good fit. Yeah. <laughs> so what got you involved in that? What, why, why why is it important to you? Right. Well, I um, I was invited to be on staff by Dwyer Sullivan, who is the the now director of Camp Micah and the founder of, of an organization called Youth for Justice. I, I had experience um, doing international development work, leading retreats and workshops for, for high school teachers and mm -hmm. high school youth around issues of... Um, of fair trade, um, human rights, and... Um, and and ecological justice as well. Um, and I was working at the University of Waterloo um, helping to facilitate some international development work as well. So at the time I had, um, it was a good fit for me and, and Dwyer reached out and asked if I would be on staff. And um, 
Yeah, I, I, I stay with Camp Micah. This is maybe leading into your next question. Okay, but, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I stay with, with Camp Micah because, um, for two reasons. One, one because it is, um, it is the type of faith community that I, I want to belong to, and it's the type of faith community that I want my children to belong to. So um, I'll never forget, it was maybe 20, 2017, I think it was the summer, and we're, we're sitting around the evening campfire, um, and, and Rosemary is sitting next to me. She was just little at the time. And I am watching this group of um, new Canadian Muslim women. They were participants, so high school youth, uh, doing a traditional dance. And they invited um, this, this gay male that we had as a participant at the time to come up and do this dance with them. And um, I, I just... My mind was kind of blown because here I was sitting, observing, um, you know, this this inter intercultural interfaith thing happening where these um, new Canadian Muslim women are are doing a traditional dance with a, a queer white Canadian <laughs> kid, and I I thought all of this at a Christian camp like yes. this is how good does it yes, get? Right? This is what I want for myself in my faith community and for my children and um, and the other reason why I stay with Camp Micah is because I, I think youth actually have what it takes to make impactful change in the world. They have this like perfect combination of passion and energy day and night, <laughs> you know, <laughs> coupled with just the right amount of recklessness and they and they have this is what it takes, right? <laughs> so what it takes. I think so. <laughs> so for me, it's the youth who, who can do this work. And, and, um, not that we have excuses not to be part of it, but they absolutely. can, you know, go lead <laughs> us too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And they are an example to me. And so, you know, each year yeah. I go back, I, I am reminded of this energy and I'm, I take a little bit of their energy that they, that they offer so freely, you know, so the youth, I think are, are the way forward. Absolutely. So just um, to wrap up, mm. you've been, we, we just love having you here at St. Paul's. We, we just really, you and Ryan and the, and the kids. Um, Thank you. We love it here too. <laughs> oh, so what are your hopes and, and dreams for St. Paul's and uh, along social justice? Right. I, I actually, I'd like to start by champion some of the thing, championing some of the things that you, that you are already doing. Um, Things that, um, it, I, I come from a, a Roman Catholic background, and so for me, one of the things that, that drew me to the United Church, and specifically to St. Paul's, is, is um, because of some of the, the more progressive and, and equitable things that you, that you do here. And, you know, such as, um, you know, providing accessibility work and accessibility training for your for your employees and your volunteers, um, making your your building accessible, um, your connection with with Waypoint, your connection with the Midland downtown community, um, specifically those who are experiencing uh, homelessness and addictions. Your your commitment to the guest house, which is your your physical neighbor. Um, your, I, I remember being struck by your having having gender non-binary um, washrooms available in your in your facility, and um, and here's a big one and one that I, I I take for granted. Thankfully, I take it for granted, but um, but it's a big one. Um, your your minister is a woman, <laughs> and this is. <laughs> In case you didn't know, <laughs> your minister is a woman, and this is not a thing that is happening in every in every faith community. Um, I know that in the United Church, you can have ministers who are gender non-binary, who are are LGBTQ, who are women, and um, it's it's um, unfortunately it's a radical idea for some communities, and. Um, we have had children at Discovery Kids uh, point that out, that Karen's a girl. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're just amazed. So, you know, these are some things that St. Paul's already doing, and I, I, I think these are some of the things that are attracting 
young families, actually I know this for a fact because I've had conversations with young families, these are the things that are attracting young families to this type of faith community. And so um, let's champion some of those things and um, I think it's great. Um, some things that, that, that I dream of for St. Paul's, um, you know, this, this pandemic has really illuminated um, the, the disparity between, um, between people who have white privilege and, and people in the black, indigenous, people of color communities. And I think that um, it would be wonderful to see, you know, a book club or a, or a meeting group where, where the congregation is, is made mostly of white folks. So it would be great to yeah. see that kind of a thing um, start up, maybe, you know, other white folks getting together and, and learning and doing the reading and doing the work together um, uh, to address some of their own inherent bias and, and prejudice that they because might have. Because you don't realize you have it, right? You, you, you don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're privileged so much that you don't realize <laughs> you're biased. <laughs> exactly. and, and so, you know, it's, it, we know it, this last year has been very clear to us. We know now that it's, it's the job of, of the white folks to take up that work. And mm -hmm. so, um, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. Um, I also, um, it's, it's great to hear that you've been doing some, some conversations around um, sponsoring another refugee family. Yeah, we, we've committed to one from Syria mm -hmm. and we've been approached about helping at another family. So uh, 16 and six years, this next family is a family of eight. And if we agree to the next one it's a family of six so wow yeah in midland which is not diverse but it needs no. to be but <laughs> right it, yeah. which makes it tricky sometimes for those for those families to integrate exactly. but um it is exactly. it is definitely a launching point for them to to come Absolutely. into canada um yeah and and you know, I think I think we can. You know, as individuals in in our congregation, we can support one another and remind one another about the important work um, that that needs to be done. And you know, there are things that that you can do um, as individuals, right? Open open your hearts and your minds to to learning and and hearing a different perspective, even though it can feel uncomfortable at times. Um, and and Get support from one another as you're as you're going through that journey. If you have the means, you can support uh, local um, local businesses and and um, you know try and get some of your some of your products more locally and and local produce and things like this. Um, and and yeah, I I wrote down a few other things <laughs> that I'm <laughs> hoping that I don't that I yeah. Yeah, I think I think uh, another thing that I, uh, by the way, I talk about environmental justice when I talk about social justice because to me they're they are um, they're profoundly connected oh, and one and the same, and absolutely. we know that um, environmental degradation disproportionately affects people who are um, in in uh, who are not in in the privileged scenario, um, and so um, and and furthermore. Uh, many of the systems that are responsible for land degradation are the same systems that are responsible for, for you know, oppressive, oppressive um, ways and, and oppressing people. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think... So we're going to have to wrap okay. it up, I think. But you know what? <laughs> this, this is a conversation that we need to bring back. I think mm -hmm. this has just been Great. absolutely wonderful. Um, ah, so so happy to have you and your family, you. part of St. Paul's, and for the leadership you give. And it's a heartfelt thanks, not just from me, but from the whole congregation. So Thank you very much. We're very grateful to be a part of this congregation. Yeah, great, great. Giving you some things to think about. <laughs> Camp Micah is a peace and justice camp for high school students.
It's in a beautiful setting in a, a part of Ontario that's away from the city. But what makes Camp Micah unique is that it's also a place where people come from various backgrounds. It's a very diverse group of people who come from around the province and really learn about themselves and for many people for the first time really feel welcome and included and feel like um, that they matter, that they belong and that they, that they do have the power and the ability to make a change in this world and make the world a better place. Camp is the place where you're not judged for your opinions, like you can say what's on your heart. So it's a great place for somebody to come and spend the week here because you will gain so much from just one week that you'll use like for the rest of your life. I was here as a participant, as a teenager, and have been involved ever since. I didn't know anything about the camp, I was just told, this is a good camp, you should come. And It's a difficult place to explain, but it's a place that um, can have life-changing effects. Like, it was my first exposure to some social justice issues as a teenager, and it kind of opened my world to all the different kinds of issues that are going on and, and are worthwhile causes. Everyone is here because they want to be and because they want to be doing some kind of like good in the world and there's something really powerful about that. There can be some heavy moments where you really bond with people and you sort of become like a small family but there are also really fun light moments like kayaking out on the lake is one of my favorite things. This is my first year at I'm Micah and I'm so excited like to do everything. I really want to try swimming and I want to work hard like on swimming to like get it. I came and I just felt really welcome. Everyone's not just accepting but embraces who you are. I think really the goal of Camp Micah is to equip and empower the youth that come here to go back into their communities, into their schools and try to make a difference. I come back every year because of the, the transformation that happens between the first day and the last day of uh, people who come as strangers. And then as the week progresses, the barriers begin to fall. People get more and more comfortable with each other and um, they're learning about some of these issues uh, around justice uh, that maybe they're encountering for the first time. I learned it's okay to be brown, it's okay to be gay, it's okay to have long hair if you want to have long hair. It's okay to be who you are. It's okay to advocate for others who want to be who they are. Being a leader is not necessarily being the person in charge or on top or even the person who's the loudest or the most famous or the most recognizable person doing something. It's about feeling empowered to do the right thing. It's being empowered to make change. It's being empowered to include others and working towards a world where people feel like they belong, people feel included, and people feel like they are good enough and, and they have what they need. A reading from the prophet Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before God with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? The Lord has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Gracious and loving God, creator of all things, we raise our hearts to you 
in gratitude for all the beauty that surrounds us. May we continue to work in your ways to bring peace and security to all people and lands. All of humanity is a gift from you that we ought to cherish and treat with dignity and respect. Even though we may grow tired and weary, may we support and uplift one another to persevere, to believe that a world where everyone belongs and is treated as equal is not only possible, it is essential. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your soul. So from east to west shall my name be blessed. Could the world be about to turn? Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the Our services come to a close now. We hope you have lots of things to think about and wonder about in the coming months and years. As we go forward, we remember the prophet Micah urging us to act with justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. 
And as we leave this place, we know that the Jesus we follow was radical, changing the world around him and always including those who were considered to be on the margins of society. And so we follow that Jesus, knowing that God calls us to work for justice and that the Holy Spirit guides us so that we can take up this gritty work and become grit to the work of justice in our world. Go in peace. Amen.